Have you noticed a trend recently within the video games industry? Everybody seems to be trying to remake Tabula Rasa. Now if you're not familiar with that game, I will actually try and do a proper show about it soon, most likely about the way it ended because I can't actually do a proper history since, you know, uh, the footage and the background is the best I've got. Though that would also be predicated on me recovering some 260 files that I lost a couple of years ago. But take a look right now at Anthem, at even Destiny and Destiny 2, and tell me that you don't see a general theme to them, one that is kind of central to what Tabula Rasa was. They're all hybrids of RPG and shooter. They all have a very big accent on finding new gear, shinier, more colored, more powerful stuff to strap onto your character and make them look whatever you want them to look like. You've got abilities, you've got powers, you've got a campaign that's driven by story for the most part in Destiny. Disney's one case it was driven by the fact that most of the people at Bungie quit and the wizard came from the moon and they're all kind of the same in terms of the general theme and plot. What's Disney about? Well, it's about the earth being invaded and most of civilization being destroyed and only one city being left and that is being guarded by something. And in the sequel, that city is destroyed too and the people are scattered throughout the solar system. What's Anthem's deal? I actually don't know, but from the looks of it, it sort of kind of resembles the fact that people are not living on an alien planet, or maybe it's Earth, maybe it's an M. Night Shyamalan's Earth from that horrible movie. And to survive, humans have had to build themselves some big space, well not space suits, but combat suits with rockets and missiles and lasers and then there is this alien race that's also there that's at war with humans and all I can think of, oh my god, this is Tabula Rasa. Tabula Rasa's main idea was that the human race encountered another species. Though it's not actually a species, it's a conglomerate of species. They kind of found, if you will, the Covenant from Halo in broad terms. They found the Bane. The Bane being a collection of races subjugated by the Nef. A very old and very angry species derived from another species that they uh, sort of almost kind of destroyed once but not really because bits of their civilization are still scattered to the galaxy and it's those remains that people and their allies use to combat the Bane. I think the name was Elo or something. It's been a while. The game focused mostly on lore and although some people have have said that um, they used to say that if the game had better PvP, then maybe it would have made it. Maybe Ubisoft would not have closed it down. And then I say, well, no, because if if you look at this and if you look at well, the division, if you look at the modern looter shooter genre, how many of them are actually? focused on PvP and in how many of them is PvP actually the thing that drives people to keep playing? Well yeah, the Division does have its Dark Zones, it does have its Survival DLC, that's not why people bought it, that's not why people play it, that's not what was sold to them, that's not why people bought Destiny. It's the aspect of going around, shooting stuff in the face and collecting loot. That's what's attractive. And this is something that Tabula Rasa did 9 years ago ago. Granted, it did not do it well in certain technical aspects. It got well the idea of building a world with its own story, with its own themes, with its own feeling. A very detailed and beautiful world, rendering the oh, beauty of a not really all that great MMO game engine from 2007. That it was a world filled with detail, a world that actually made you feel something for the plight of everyone in there. You're playing as the remnants of the human race scattered throughout the galaxy with Earth nearly destroyed, abandoned, crushed under the heels of an invader that defies all reason in terms of scale and power. And the only way you can beat it back is by, well, divine intervention almost. Which is like that egg thing in Destiny that came from the moon and was a wizard. And I guarantee you it's, it's probably gonna be something like that in Anthem too. I mean, having a game set in space where people are exploring and they're fighting an alien race and they're not being an older one, an ancient one, from which they learn many secrets, yeah, that's 
not a cliche that Bioware is gonna skate over. And it is a cliche, I mean, it was only that original when the people that made Double Rasa did it too. It's something we've seen in games since games started. It was in Halo, it was in Starcraft. It was kind of a staple of sci-fi and sci-fi games altogether. But again, there is a similarity beyond this with Tabula Rasa. In the fact that this was, I would say, the first example of this kind of game, of the looter shooter MMO style game. If you can find an earlier example of this kind of game, a looter shooter, like a game that's online only, that has shooterish components at least, that's not World of Warcraft, like it's not fantasy, please say so in the comments, I may have missed it. Though to be clear, I do not qualify Anarchy Online as being one because it was more of a traditional MMO. Though to be fair, in the age when Anarchy Online was actually made, there really wasn't a traditional MMO and it sort of did its own things in certain terms, but it behaved more like an MMO than Tabula Rasa did. In terms of basic mechanics, I mean, because MMO is such a nebulous term nowadays that they're kind of generalistic. What I mean is that Tabula Rasa had in it the seeds of a shooter. Now, here's the thing. This was made in 2007. It was built upon technology created in 2004, which was not a great year to make video games which required precise aiming over the internet, which involved a lot of people and the persistent world filled with NPCs. Sure, it wasn't something that could run of a 56k modem, which is something that NCSoft did tell us when uh, they closed it down as a reason for what well, we can uh, not really afford the, uh, the bandwidth and stuff. They really just wanted the game to go away because they wanted to write it off as a loss and get back some tax credits. But the idea is that the game was not built upon an infrastructure that could actually handle precision and direct fire weapons. So in actuality, what you got was still a game that relied on targeting the enemies and then shooting in their general direction to just hit them. And your chance of hitting was still influenced mostly by your statistics, not by your aim. That is an important difference compared to Destiny, compared to what I mentioned Anthem's gonna be. And Double Rats also had the, again, the misfortune of being more towards the MMO side of the technical side spectrum, meaning that enemies also kind of shot at you and they would hit you pretty much regardless. I believe you did get a sort of defense buff if you tried to hide behind stuff, but their fire would just pass through walls, they would pass through trees, well, not, not enclosures, but chest high walls and cover, that wasn't actually a thing in the game. But mind you, the combat it had was actually good. One game I like to compare this to is another one I like, The Secret World. A quite enjoyable game which just got re-released as The Secret World Legends, which I have not yet played to see exactly what the differences are, but what The Secret World really sort of lacked was good combat. It was just boring as hell. It had some abilities, some good ones that would be usable once in a blue moon. You had enemies that were kind of bullet spongy and it just didn't feel fluid because you couldn't click and shoot people, you just had to use abilities. Double Rasa didn't have that. In Double Rasa, you clicked, you hit someone in the face with your shotgun, with your sniper rifle, with your machine gun, with your laser, with your... You even had swords at one point if you were one of those spies kind of character. And you did have a plethora of abilities, which you could also use to rain, fire and teleport ordnance on top of your enemies. You could call in an airstrike through teleportation by invoking ancient alien glyph technology that hacked reality. And what really, in my opinion, really, really set it apart from MMOs of its age, you couldn't go to battle with one gun. In most games, you have your legendary sword of Ogre Decapitation plus 10, your fabled halberd of Ishka Bibble, your ultimate sword of I grinded 150 hours to tell to get these things. In Double Rasa, things didn't work like that. You're fighting a very diverse 
enemy, who used at times squad tactics, meaning that at the same battle you would find enemies immune to certain types of weapons. For example, you'd find some that were immune to fire because they came from hell itself, others didn't really mind being shot in the face with simple lead, but weren't all that keen on lasers. And you would have to carry around a diverse arsenal. Now this is something I don't actually see in, in Destiny and other games like it, but I'd like to see it. I think it's one of the characteristics that really set this game apart, also the way that the world was built. You've seen in Anthem's trailer that uh, they say that this world is sort of not procedurally generated, but things in it can happen because there's a simulation underlying the whole thing that generates stuff from time to time. So what happens in one moment may not happen the next time you go there, there may be some other creature there, there may be another encounter, and that sounds great. That's also something that Tabula Rasa had. Because in Tabula Rasa, enemies weren't just standing there waiting, well, no wait, local enemies, like creatures that were in the forest, creatures that were just there to kind of wonder, well, I've been living on this planet for a million years, I evolved here, I live here in peace all my life, but these blasted humans came, they brought the bane, and I'm gonna chew them, and I'm gonna eat them, and I'm gonna spit them out because they stink. Yeah, they, they would just be there. But the bane usually weren't. The bane would come in their dropships, you would see them land, you would see them then go on patrols, and you would see them attack settlements, like the place where you would get quests from, where you would sell your gear to. They would attack. If you weren't there, to actually protect the settlements, you would then kind of have to get used to the fact that the Bane owned it. Well, they owned it until enough players got around and actually beat them back. It was a sort of tug of war system that encouraged people to work together to accomplish common goals. Well, the common goal of you're in a war, you're gonna die, people are gonna lose, and you are going to be responsible because you didn't win. And this again is a mechanic that you see in a bunch of games today, and some of them aren't even MMOs, they're single player games. Sure, they may have gotten the idea from somewhere else, but Tabula Rasa did it kind of really well. It was one of its best features. The world felt alive, it felt like it was there doing its thing and not static. And it's the kind of mechanic I wouldn't mind seeing in MMOs too. Well, that is already in some MMOs like Guild Wars 2, but I want to see it in more of them, especially the new generation of looter shooters where you go around an open world and kill stuff and then that stuff may come and kill you too. Like, re remember when Firefall seemed to be good or a game or made by people that actually understood what they were doing and didn't spend millions on promoting a game that wasn't yet ready and then focusing on making it an eSport and then realizing, oh my god, we, we can't, can we? And then I should probably give Firefall another go. I mean, it, it probably has improved since the beta, right? Right? But it also is a good example of games that look eerily similar to Tabula Rasa. Only again, Firefall wasn't all that great, because it focused on mindless grinding of ore, instead of game being one that's good. But hopefully the developers of Destiny 2 and Anthem understood the ideas better. Maybe they will be able to give me what I've been dreaming of since NCSoft closed Tabula Rasa and since I saw that uh, people were actually trying to bring back the game with private servers, but were then sadly killed in their sleep by NCSoft, which is a Tabula Rasa game that is better. A Tabula Rasa game that is more a shooter and less a head scan weapon thingamabob. Not that there is something absolutely wrong with that. I mean, the implementation of Tabula Rasa was good enough that you felt like you're actually shooting stuff and not just pressing 1, 2, 3, 4 and standing still and everything dies, which is what all in a Mortal Kombat usually is. But there's, there's a more of a visceral feel to it and not visceral in the marketing 
sense, but more in the palpable sense. It makes the combat feel even more impactful, even more rewarding, like you're achieving something and not just pressing 1, 3, 4 and then everything dies. And to be honest, I'm not a fan of Destiny, I didn't really get the hype. I know it's made by Bungie, what's left of it, but Anthem, that actually looks nice. If it doesn't get cancelled like the last one did, and if Bioware doesn't do another, well, what they've been doing since Dragon Age 2. And in all of these games, I can still see the seed of Tablo Rust, I can still see the ideas of it. And I'm happy, because even though that game failed, even though NCSoft pretty much did not care to actually invest in it enough to give it a chance, even though it had some bits that were fundamentally kind of boring and not all that great, that game was fun. That game had a uniqueness to it, a sense of identity, that I don't mind seeing it being borrowed by other games, as long as they're not fireful and stink. Like I've said, I'm gonna try and do a show about the end of Tabula Rasa. It's a story I've told a couple of times and it's probably worth telling again. And hey, by any chance, if you were a player of Tabula Rasa, I'm not crazy, am I? Like, you do see the same ideas it had being replicated in a bunch of contemporary games, right? 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 Well, if you do, say so in the comments. Goodbye.